Hi, and welcome to this edition of Sam's Tech Talk. On today's edition, we're going to talk about exploring the internet, using web browsers, that type of thing. And we're going to go over some terms that you'll need to know there, and what the most popular web browsers are that people use today. Um, for the most part, we're going to, we're going to, another thing we're going to talk about was we're going to talk about bookmarking websites that you want to see again and where you find those in the different browsers that you have. And also, we're going to talk about how you protect your privacy when you're doing your internet browsing so you don't have them giving you suggestions when you're in another app about where you should go just because you looked at something on another um, web browser. Um, first of all, I want to talk to you about what the internet actually is. The internet can be talked um, of as a couple of different things. You might hear people refer to it as the net or refer to it as the web. And this all just means that you're getting to the internet. And when the internet was initially developed, it was developed as an aid to progress the way that um, computers were linked together in the academic world. And then the internet that we know today was actually developed um, in 1969. The first message that we ever, was ever sent over the internet was sent on Friday, October 29th. And then in 1993, they developed the internet that we know today, that you and I go to and search in. And when you look at these dates, that'll tell you that no, Al Gore did not invent the internet. So if you need to think about that as a little tidbit of useless information. One thing you need to remember is, is the internet contains billions of web pages that are created by people and by companies all around the world. Um, it's a limitless place to locate information and entertainment. The one thing you need to remember is not all information that's put out on the internet is accurate. It is only as accurate as the person who puts it out there believes it to be. And some people do put deceptively inaccurate information out there. So it's up to you to determine what you want to believe when you see it on the internet. Some of the terms we're going to talk about are is web browser. Web browser is actually the tool that you use to access the, the internet. When we talk about navigating, navigating means that you're actually looking at all the different pages. That's what that means. And a website, that is actually the page or a group of pages that someone has developed in order to give you information about a specific subject. One example of that would be um, the city of Sheboygan has a website. Um, the library has a website. Cole's Department Store has a website. All of these different things are websites. And they're up to the different people who have them to put those out there and keep them up to date. And a link is something that you're going to hear a lot about. A link is a word or a group of words that when you see them on your websites, a lot of times they're blue and they have a line underneath them. And when you click on it, it takes you to someplace different. It may take you to a different part of that page. It may take you to another internet page. Or it may take you to just another source for the same information. Another thing to think about is the word download. And we've talked about that before when we talked about our basic um, terms for the computer in another episode. But when we talk about download in reference to the internet, that's how you receive information onto your computer. Um, an example of that would be is you get an email and it has an attach, a picture attached to it. In order to save that picture to your computer, you would have to download it to your computer. Um, if you go to a site that allows you to add a program or an app to your computer, 
when you click on that to add that to your computer, you are downloading that program to your computer. And then the opposite term of this is the term upload. And upload is what happens when you send something to the internet. When you back up your information to the cloud, that is an upload of information to the internet. Um, when you attach a picture to an email, that is uploaded to the email site. And then another thing that we have is the address bar. And that's the text bar that you see in all of your different browsers. And that's where you type in what you want to find on the internet, whether it is the www.whateveritis.com or org or whatever, or a question or a group of words that you might put in that box to search for on the internet. Then another thing we're going to talk about is bookmark. And bookmark means that's the process of saving a website that you want to visit again to make it easily accessible in that web browser. And a favorite is actually any site that you have bookmarked. So you bookmark it to make it a favorite. And then most web browsers have what they call a favorites bar. And it's a little bitty bar that runs along the bottom of the very top part of your thing, of your web browser, where you can actually save a group of websites so that they can be easily accessed in just a matter of one keystroke or one click of your mouse. Now, what we're going to talk about here is what are the most popular web browsers? The two most popular web browsers out there today are Google and Firefox. Then right behind that now we currently have a new one called Microsoft Edge. And that one is replacing Internet Explorer as Microsoft's, Microsoft's default web browser. So anytime you have Microsoft, you know, Windows on your computer, you're going to have in Windows 8 and Windows 10, you're going to have Microsoft Edge as your default web browser. Safari is another one, and that is Apple's web browser. It's the one they developed for their products. And you can also add it to any other product as well, whether it's a, a Microsoft product or any of the other tablets. It is possible to download Safari as an extra web browser for you. And then the last one that I'm going to talk about is one of my favorites. It's one called Opera. And it is an independently developed web browser. And it is not affiliated with any specific computer maker. So it is just one that a group of people have gotten together and developed. Web browsers are a personal preference. There is no one that is better than another one. It's just whatever you want to have as being your favorite one. So don't think you're doing something wrong if you decide that all you want to use is Microsoft Edge, or if Google is your favorite, or Safari. It's always whichever one is your preference. They all take you to the same internet. And another key point of information that you might want to think about too is, is that you always need to have at least two web browsers installed on your computer. And the reason for that is, is if by chance your virus protection fails and it does not block what they call hostageware, where you get this and somebody, you click on something, and suddenly you get this little box on your screen that tells you unless you call this 800 number, you're not going to be able to access your computer again. That's going to lock up the current web browser that you're in. But if you have a second web browser, you're in luck. You don't have to worry about it. Someone who knows how to work on computers is going to know how to go in there and get rid of that piece of 
malicious software that is taking control of your one web browser. So always keep at least two web browsers on your computer. And then that way, whoever is going to correct your problem for you has what they call a back door to get out to the internet and clean up the other web browser. As I said before, all web browsers take you to the exact same internet. So you don't have to worry about that. So develop your favorites and work from there. Um, one thing about it is, is that each one of the different web browsers may have a little bit of a different order. Say you look up antique cars and you look at the different web browsers. If you'll notice on most of them, about the first two or three entries that you see are going to have the word add with them. That means that that company or that person who developed that website has paid a premium to make their website show up first, no matter if it's the best one or not. They always just show up first. So browse down a little bit when you do a search and look just beyond those and see which ones are below that. Because just because it's first doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best. Now, the most popular web browser you see is Google Chrome. Whew, can't talk there for a second. Google Chrome. And with that web browser, how you go and develop and put your favorites in on that one is, is you'll open up your home page for Google. And when you type in something into that address bar and you put it out there on the web page there, you're going to see a little unfinished star at the right side of the address bar. If you want to bookmark that page, you would click on that and it would turn that little star yellow. And it would tell you, it will put up a little screen that says bookmark added. And at this point in time, you can actually change the name of whatever you're looking at and name it something that's good for you. I know like Kohl's, Kohl's says Kohl's department store, home of menswear, women's wear, blah, 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 blah. And it's just a really long title and it puts something out there that you really can't see all of, you might just want to make that name Coles. And then when you're there, it also says you have the folder where you want to save it. If you want to put it on the bookmark bar, you can choose it there. Or if you want to just save it with your bookmarks, you can choose it there. Then when you're finished, you would click Done, and it would put it out there for you as a bookmarked website. So then anytime you go back to find it, you would be able to find it. When you're looking in Chrome, on the right side, top right corner, you see the, the symbol that says other bookmarks. And if you click on that, all of your bookmarks show there. So that's what you've got there. And also too, if you want to change your privacy, you've got a little spot where there are three bars. You click on that, then you'll see the word settings. You'll go down through there and then you can glance down through that. And in um, Chrome, you have to go down to advanced settings and that's where you see privacy. And the one thing that you always want to do on this is that you want to tell it Uncheck the one that says automatically send usage statistics and that kind of thing. So they are, it's just a matter of what you want it there too. And also you want to check, put a check mark in the said one that says send a do not track request. That keeps them from keeping up with what you're doing on the internet. So that's what you've got there. And on Chrome, too, you have what they call the little house that sends you back to your very beginning page. So anytime you want to look for things there, look in Chrome there. If you want to save a site, highlight that little star there and save it as that one there. Chrome is pretty much a simple one to look at when you're trying to save things. 
Then the second one that we want to talk about is, the next one is what they call Mozilla Firefox. And when you're in Mozilla, when, when you're in Firefox, which is what most people call it, when you go to your very first page and you open it up, you see a little fox around a, a circle there. And if you want to save something there, they use the same star that Chrome uses. And it goes through the same process that Chrome does. It's always how you find it there. Then if you want to find your bookmarked pages, right beside that star, there is one where it says show your bookmarks. And it'll drop down the list of all of your bookmarks that you have there. And you can see any one that you want. And you can just click on it to go where you want to go. So to save it, you touch the star, turns it blue. And then if you want to find anything in your group, you go to your list there and find them. Your settings on this one are on the little three dots there. Or you can click at the bottom of the screen on your home screen and go under options. And that will take you to your security and to your privacy. And always uncheck the tracking one. That keeps them from tracking and putting um, local specific ads on your web browsing when you're looking there. Especially if you use Facebook. Say you go on Coles and you look up for khaki pants. The next thing you know when you're in Facebook the next day, you'll start seeing ads for other companies that sell khaki pants. So if you uncheck this tracking here, they can't track you with that there. So that one's there. This one's a good one that most people use when they need um, security. Like a lot of the banks want you to use Firefox there. Then the next one that we're going to talk about is going to be Microsoft Edge, which is the new one for, internet, for um, Microsoft there. When we're on that one, when you're looking at your screen for it, if you enter in a site and you put it out there, they have a star just like any, like the other ones do. You click on that star and it takes you through the same exact process of saving it, just like we did on the others. Then, if you want to find your favorites that you've done, you'll see three lines to the next to that, to that. That's called your hub. And when you click on that, that takes you to your favorites that are out there. And it also, too, will show you your history that you've been on there. It takes you to where you've been before. So if you know you looked at a site a couple of days before, but you didn't bookmark it, you can touch your history, and it'll take you back to that. So they're all pretty much the same. But then if you want to make changes to your settings, on the top corner there on the right side, you'll see three dots. When you click those three dots, you'll go to settings, and it takes you down into your privacy settings there. And you just kind of look through that and make it look the way you want it to look. Then the next one that I want to talk about is, let's see what we got here. We're going to go to Safari. Safari is Apple's web browser. So when you go into that one, it's pretty simple there. When you're in this one, on the left side of a site that you enter, you'll see a plus sign. If you want to bookmark it, you hit that plus sign, and it takes you through the same process as the others. If you want to see the sites that you bookmarked, on that left side, in the top corner there, you'll see what looks like an open book. You click on that, and it takes you to your bookmarked sites. So theirs looks a little bit different, but it's the same sites there. And then if you want to change any of your privacy settings, their settings is in this one little corner. If you'll notice there when I'm doing this, if I have my mouse hovered over that, you'll see that the drop-down says display your settings. Then when you click on it, it shows you the different settings that you have there. So you can edit things from there. 
Then, of course, the last one that I want to show you before we move on is called Opera. And it's one of my favorites. It's a little bit different, but it's, it's really cool. If you want to add a site, you can look for it there. You find it. It puts it here, there, out there, and then you have a heart on this one as well. You'll click on that heart. That adds it to your favorites there. Then if you want to find your favorites again in your top left corner, you'll see a drop-down thing that says Menu. You'll click there, then you'll go to Bookmarks, and then your bookmarks show as well. Your bookmarks show right here on that. So anything that you've saved will be there. So that's what you have on those. Now, when you're looking at Safari, when you're on your main page, where you go to make any kinds of changes are this little wheel that looks like a little cog, like inside a watch. So you click on that, and it takes you to the different things that you can customize on that. All of your web browsers take you to the same internet, so that's the biggest thing to remember there. And another feature of this one is, is that you can add like little tiles there to make them there, so if you want it to look like a smartphone. So this one's kind of cool. I suggest you explore it if you ever get the chance. And how you go to that one is opera.com, download it, and add it to your machine. That's just like you do with any of the others. So. Now, when we're going to wrap up with what we're talking about here today, um, some of the last things that we want to talk about is protecting your privacy. You always want to turn off the location finders and your browser tracking. Those are your two biggest things. And another way to protect your privacy and to protect your computer is, is to remember not to visit sites that might be considered unreputable or a little bit on the gray side of things. You don't want to go to a lot of gambling sites where you have to give a credit card because they're notorious for spreading viruses and malware and those and Trojan horses. Pornography sites do that as well. And you never want to open any email or any website link that's in an email if it comes from somebody that you don't know. These are the kinds of things that cause your computer to be accept, infected with viruses, malware, and spyware. So that's the key thing to remember there. Now, when you want to protect your device, Chromebooks and Apple products don't usually need any additional virus protection. If you want to add that little extra layer, that's okay. But they do have good built-in protection. Windows 8 and 10 has a built-in virus protection program called Windows Defender. And it will protect you for anything with Windows. And you add that one through your settings. Then one thing you need to do is remember that most of the other tablets and smartphones, they have free virus protection available through the app stores. The biggest thing to remember is you can get great virus protection for free. You never have to spend tons of money for all these purchased virus protection packages where they cost you $100 or more a year. There are good free virus protection packages out there. Then the last thing to remember is you can get information on any subject under the sun, good or bad. You need to understand that all the information you find is not necessarily going to be accurate or even the truth. And when you explore sites, remember that the most reputable sites out there are usually developed by people who have print sites. Like say the New York Times has a newspaper and they have a website. A store like Kohl's has their store and they have their website. The library has a site. Look for reputable sites. And always remember that it is a wonderful tool to expand your knowledge on things that you're familiar with and things that you want to learn to get new information on. It's a great things out there. It's always great to explore the internet, but the thing of it is, though, is that you have to be smart. If you wouldn't want to do it in print, don't go there in the internet. 
and just be smart when you're browsing. If anyone has questions, feel free to contact me through WSCS Sheboygan, or if you have any other info that you would like to find out, anything else that you would like for me to talk about, please send us an email, and I'll be happy to take care of it for you. And this is Sam, and I'd like to thank you for joining me for Sam's Tech Talk. Hope to see you again soon.